Hey everybody, welcome back. In today's video, I'm responding to another question in the, or rather another request in the comments section, which is from someone called Welcome to My Sunny Day. Nice. So it says, please do a video on how to prepare and conduct an in-person workshop for requirements, please. So that's what we'll be doing today. We will be looking at um, how to prepare and conduct an in-person workshop for requirements gathering, requirements elicitation and documentation. Um, so with a lot of jobs going remote, a lot of BA jobs and a lot of various jobs in general going remote, uh, workshops are being held remotely. However, as business analysts, at certain points in your projects, you would feel the need for having an in-person workshop. In-person workshops are a vital tool for business analysts. All business analysts need to know how to run workshops in person. Why is that? Because it helps to facilitate direct communication and foster collaboration and also help you to clarify any project requirements with the key stakeholders that will be involved in that workshop. How do you set up one effectively as a business analyst? So like I always mention in most of my videos, preparation is key, not just in business analysis or in career, in everything most of everything in life, you need to prepare for whatever it is that you are aiming, whatever your goal is. You need to make sure that you're prepared so that you have the confidence and ability to tackle any challenges that come forth. So let's come back to workshop. You already know what I want to say. Number one is preparation. You need to do some pre-workshop -pre -pre preparation. Why? Because you can't just start the workshop. It doesn't just happen. So you need to carefully plan the layout of your workshop. What are the preparation steps? Number one, you need to define the objectives of the workshop. What exactly is it you want to achieve from the workshop? Two, choose your participants. Who are your key stakeholders? You need to select those key stakeholders that uh, will provide the valuable input for the requirements that you're looking to, to gather. Make sure that you have the right stakeholders that are um, involved in that workshop. So choose your participants carefully. The third point is to develop an agenda. Outline the topics that you want to um, discuss in the workshop and the structure of the workshop so that the stakeholders know what to also prepare for because a lot of times stakeholders also need to come prepared with information that they need to share with you in regards to whatever your workshop is about. And the fourth thing is the arrangement, the venue, right? Logistical arrangement for your workshop. You need to ensure that the venue, the equipment and all the materials that you need are ready. So if you're going in, into the office at work, make sure that the systems work. Make sure you go in a bit earlier so that you check that everything works. Um, because even with in-person workshop, you will still find a lot of stakeholders are at home. So you need to make sure that they're also able to dial into the workshop. So although I've mentioned the four preparation steps, there is one key one, which is obviously emailing your stakeholders to let them know that the workshop is holding. So with defining your objective, choosing your participants and developing an agenda, once you have that, you then send the details to your stakeholder to be ready for the workshop day. Select preferable workshop day as well for your stakeholders. There's so many things you need to think about with regards to pre-workshop preparation. So that's the first thing. The second thing is your workshop facilitation technique. What technique are you going to use um, to facilitate your workshop? So as a business analyst, your role during the workshop is to guide the discussion and also ensure that the objectives that you have defined are met. So what are the facilitation tips that I can share? The first one is start with introductions. Maybe allow everybody to introduce themselves and talk about what they do and what impact their, their perspective will have on the project or on the requirements that you're looking to gather. Set a welcoming tone and ensure openness within the room. Encourage um, everyone to be open to the discussion. The second tip is to use engaging techniques. There are so many techniques you can use as business analysts. One of them includes brainstorming, others are sticky notes as well as group discussions. In encouraging that openness, then it will allow you to implement your engagement or, or engaging techniques. My third tip is to keep the conversation focused. 
focus on what the topic is about don't try not to go outside of it you will find that this happened a lot in workshop where stakeholders have so much they just have so much to share and sometimes it can go outside the scope of the discussion that you are having so again as business analysts using your soft skills try to bring the stakeholders back to the room dare your stakeholders back on track if needed whenever that happens it, it always happens in workshops so you need to be able to bring them back to the topic my fourth facilitation tip is to encourage participation make sure everyone's voice is heard make sure everyone has opportunity to speak up and express their requirements those are my four tips so you've prepared for your workshop you've implemented these various tips for facilitation the fourth thing is your post workshop activities after you've finished capturing your requirements in the workshop what happens afterwards the work isn't over you need to consolidate and act on what you've gathered quick 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 because you will forget <laughs> so all the notes you've taken make sure you present them in a format a readable format so that you can send it to your to your stakeholders um anyway so what are the two steps the first one is document the outcomes like i mentioned you want to compile all your notes and all the decisions made um, any key topics or focuses on the workshop you want to capture them in your notes and the second post workshop step is to follow up with those key stakeholders don't just have the workshop and then nobody hears from you again till the next meeting you want to follow up by sharing a summary with the workshop participants as well as outlining your next steps that is key so before i conclude today's video let's go over some best practices and common mistakes to avoid as a business analyst okay so best practices include clear communication time management active listening Okay, once you have allocated the timing for your workshop, try to manage um, everything within your agenda. So when you send off your agenda to your stakeholders, make sure that everything is timed so that you don't end up discussing one topic throughout the whole workshop and set the right time to capture all the details you want. So those are my tips on best practices, clear communication with your pre-prep work, managing time and active listening. Now, what are common mistakes that business analysts make here or anybody facilitating workshops? This is not, it's not just business analysts who facilitate workshops. So common mistakes include overcrowding the agenda. Again, keep your agenda focused to, to what it is you're trying to capture from the meeting. So the second common mistake that you might encounter is not being able to manage your dominant stakeholders, your dominant participants. These are stakeholders that have high influence and high power. I mentioned in a previous video of having a fear of authority. So sometimes that might come, come through. So try as a business analyst to manage those types of stakeholders as well during your workshop because they might end up wanting to speak so much they might have so much information that they want to share and they and because they have high influence and high power they might want to just make so much decisions on various things so again it falls back to employing your soft skills bringing the room back to focus and allowing other people in the workshop to speak not just your dominant stakeholders and the third common mistake is failing to follow up i already mentioned follow up by sending a summary to your stakeholders if you fail to follow up nobody knows what what next steps are and it will have impact on your project so in conclusion conducting an effective workshop is a skill that significantly improves your requirements capturing process as a business analyst so try not to be too hard on yourself and remember practice makes progress so every opportunity you have to run a workshop always try to prepare and over time you master the art of workshop facilitation okay so like with most of my videos i like to do a case study example so let's look at a case study workshop which is looking at enhancing the digital platform of a library this is a hypothetical case study okay so i'm going to be reading from my laptop the background of this is a the library which is a well-established public library with a rich history is looking to upgrade its digital platform this upgrade aims to improve user experience, integrate new features and enhance overall digital accessibility for its members. The library has decided to conduct an in-person workshop to gather requirements for the projects. 
What is the objective of the project? Remember I said you need to define the objective of your project. Our key objective already mentioned in the background is to gather comprehensive requirements for the digital platform upgrade, focusing on user experience, feature integration, as well as accessibility. As a business analyst, what do you want to do? You want to plan, prepare. Firstly, the date and venue of the workshop. The workshop is scheduled for X dates at the main branch of the library. Participants, participants will include the librarians, the IT staff, the library members, such as the students, researchers, or any casual readers, which could be members, right? And possibly a representative from the digital platforms dev team, development team. Now, remember I mentioned when you do your agenda, make sure everything is time boxed um, to each topic that you want to discover, that you want to discuss. Agenda, the first thing is your introduction and objective should take about 10 minutes. Uh, your presentation on current digital platform should take about 10 minutes because this is the requirements um, elicitation workshop. We should already as business analysts know what the current platform is and some a lot of the current processes so you would have possibly done other workshops in the past um, about the current digital platform so you probably want to do a presentation on the current digital platform for about 20 minutes um, and then you probably want to have a uh, breakout sessions focusing on specific areas so you would just have to uh, create groups of stakeholders, certain stakeholder types, um, and talk about your their user experience, their the feature integration requirements or any um, accessibility requirements. Maybe make that one hour. Let's make that one hour. Maybe one hour each for each of the topic: user experience, feature integration, accessibility. And in these uh, breakout sessions. So it's at this stage that you want to then adopt those various other techniques that we use in workshops, right? Such as your brainstorming, the sticky notes and um, group discussions, okay? In your agenda, you should also set a group discussion and feedback sharing for one hour and then finally have a wrap up and next steps for 30 minutes. So this is the agenda that you would also send to the stakeholders so that they know. How long is this going to take? One, two, three, four, five hours. <laughs> I don't want to be in a five hour <laughs> workshop. But again, depending on how much detail you want to capture and depending on the project plan and timeline of, of expectations, you would manage the time somehow. But this is just a hypothetical case study. <laughs> workshops, I feel that workshops shouldn't last more than four hours, two to four hours. And within your agenda, you want to allocate break time, whether it's 15 minutes or half an hour break time, because people will just start to fall asleep in the workshop and uh, just get bored. Now, let's look at the workshop execution. During the workshop, participants were divided into three groups based on their areas of interest and expertise, like I mentioned within the agenda. Um, and then each group participates in facilitated discussions and brainstorming sessions using tools such as whiteboards and sticky notes for idea capturing, for capturing their ideas. The room is gonna be a bit loud, I think. <laughs> let's say the group for user experience, user experience group, they focused on improving navigation, search functionality, and visual design of the platform. Um, the feature integration group concentrated, concentrated on new features like virtual book clubs, um, online reservation, and personalized reading recommendations. It's just a case study. And then your third group, which is your accessibility group, We'll discuss the need for the screen reader compatibility. We want the app to be accessible to various types of users. So they probably will discuss things around um, screen reader compatibility, any multilingual support and, and user friendly mobile access. So that's the workshop execution stage. What was the outcome? The workshop successfully gathered detailed and varied requirements from different user perspectives. These three key user perspectives. The user experience group emphasized simplifying the search function and incorporating a more intuitive interface. Um, the feature integration group suggested implementing an AI-based recommended system and virtual events hosting feature. 
and the accessibility group highlighted the importance of um, multilingual support. So that's the outcome of our workshop. We were able to determine these three key suggestions from our key stakeholders. Now, what happens post-workshop? What are the actions? Business analysts will compile a comprehensive requirements document, categorize and prioritize the suggestions from each group. Obviously, there'll be more suggestions. Again, it is a case study, so it's high level. And then the business analyst will share the documents with all stakeholders and the development team will begin the work or on a roadmap for the digital platform upgrade. Obviously, this is very high level explanation. If you look at past videos, you, you would see how the business analyst approach works. What is your approach to projects as a business analyst? So it follows a very various other um, tasks and activities that business analysts perform. So what is the conclusion of our use case? <laughs> The in-person workshop was instrumental in bringing together diverse viewpoints and creating a shared vision for the digital platform. So obviously once everybody in the group has uh, discussed what their suggestions are, there will then be an open discussion about next steps, about the requirements. It's, it's a whole lot of detail. So in conclusion, the active participation and collaborative environment provided a deep understanding of user needs and set a solid foundation for the project's success. So that's just one case study. I hope that helps you to visualize what a workshop looks like and how the various perspectives of the stakeholders are considered in workshops. So I really hope that's helped you if you're preparing to do an in-person workshop as a business analyst or as a workshop facilitator. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, share this content and as always I'll see you in my next one. Peace!